So I would love, and it's my pleasure to introduce uh, three of our type designers in this exhibit. We have uh, David John Ross, Eric Laughlin, and Rob Sam Todd uh, from all over the world. So if you guys would I'd like to start out um, one at a time, introduce yourselves, and maybe talk about your first memory of letter forms and why you um, start working with them and what your favorite part about working with letter forms is. So who wants to go first? <laughs> David, go first. I'm... Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, you, David, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We, we might have some delays that happening. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Dave Ross. I um, have a small foundry. Uh, my initial is DJR. Um, I also run a Formula One club, which is a lot of fun. Um, sorry, I'm getting my feedback. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I, I, and I work with the Titan Network, and um, I probably do something else too that I don't remember right now. Um, he does a lot of things. Uh, um, so early memories of letter forms. I, I actually early memories for me are through language. I'm very interested in language. Um, I'm Jewish, so I learned like I, like the Hebrew script at a young age, and like the whole idea that like reading can happen in a totally opposite direction of what I'm used to is like very interesting. And as a kid, I actually invented my own constructed language, so I could write notes for myself, and only I could read it. I would actually like question my TSA about it. Um, <laughs> anyway, that me. Thanks, everybody. I'll, I'll go next. Um, my name is Erin McLaughlin, and uh, I'm a typeface designer that mainly works with non-Latin scripts. So you might have seen the exhibition I had um, Devnagri and Canada scripts, which are used in India. Um, I. Previously worked at Heffler and Frere Jones in New York City doing Latin type, and I still do some Latin typefaces as well. But I guess, like uh, David said, I'm interested in languages, and I remember um, I actually had the opportunity to take Japanese as my language in middle school, and I remember trying to read like Sailor Moon manga comics and stuff. That was a lot of fun. But I actually think probably my first memory of uh, letter forms was probably those magnetic letters that you put on a refrigerator or something, and I think it was Cooper Black typeface, which is you know, very different than um, standard letters you learned in school. So I think I learned there's such thing as fonts or letter design back then. Um, and I like working with letter forms because they're, it's an art, it's, you know, you draw it's some kind of an art form, but it's utilitarian, there's a purpose to it, and that's why I like working on fonts. Sam. Roxanne. Okay, so hello. My name is uh, Roxanne Leto. I am a French typist in the I live and work in Paris. And I also do my work for the company we did together right now. Uh, and my first book, Letter Forms, um, I mean, I will answer my letter forms as a series. Mine were was when I was in high school, when I was 14 in that design class. And we were all working at the end of that time. And I remember we were spending hours and hours on drawing. It was a piece of lettering for the papers on my project by then. Then I would actually spend way more time on doing the lettering and the like, shapes than working on the project themselves. And I remember for a project about the same material and ecology, I drew some uh, organic letters. It was very weird because I was not a face designer at the time. This was my first memory of letter forms. It's funny to look at the top because I'm very weird and bad. <laughs> There's some feedback on your Oxfam, so I'm just going to summarize real quick. So you said um, that your like earliest memories were like when you were in high school, like 14 years old, and um, just spending more time on the lettering of projects than the design itself, correct? Yes. Yes, okay, I just wanted to make sure that we all heard that correctly. Thank you. Um, yeah, so thank you guys. Uh, those are some fun and weird memories as 
I think a lot of us have a lot of problems growing up. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys a couple questions um, directly. But um, so, David, what motivated you to produce the work that you decided to show in what you see is not what you what you get? Um, so we have fit. For example, do you want to talk about that for a little bit? Sure. Um, should I share my screen? Should we try this? You know what? Let's do it. Weird? Let's do it. It's so dangerous. Let's do this. Okay. I, I, I like danger. All right. We're all about danger over here. What happens? Um, so that's not the key at the moment. This one is. Um, so fit actually started with. Hey, can everyone see this, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. It's awesome. Whoa. Yeah. So. Um, it started with um, actually my tech, like like I'm very really interested in monospace as, as a concept, like a small monospace tech base, like one for code. Um, this is one I designed called input. Um, all the letters have to fit in the same width. So if you think of like a typewriter, where M, where, where the widest letter like M and the narrowest letter like I have to occupy the same amount of space. Um, so what happens, uh, like, like a cool thing that happens in a monospace font is um, you get um, letters with different thicknesses, right? So you have, um, you know, the, the, the more complex the letter, the thinner it has to be in order to optically appear to be the same size. And that's even more pronounced in a bold. Um, so, so, so I don't know if you can see the difference, but the R has to have a thicker stem, and because it's a less busy letter, the M has to be thin. So the whole idea with fit is like if I could occupy space, I, I could actually just take that to the extreme and just fill space, right? So the so this is an R, and its stem takes up almost half the space. And then an M is a bit is a more complex letter, so the, the, the stem is about a third of the space. And then I just kind of kept on going with that and was like, well, could I monospace entire words? So like like the word test, now this stem is only that thick. And um, you know, then you keep on going, narrower, that thick, narrower, that thick. And you know, just kind of going as as extreme as you want. Um, and so yeah, and, and then the idea with that is that the white space always stays the same no matter what. And so then, because it's so bold and because it occupies, so, like the letters are designed to occupy the maximum amount of space, you can you can do stuff like oops, um, you can uh, you know have all these different variants of letters, and yeah, just take take enough space. That's all this fun, even the accent. Oh, and what I was going to say is, if you have a font that takes a lot of space, you can make it really epic and put cool images in there. Let's see. Um, that, that's it, pretty much. <laughs> and so, but like, can you talk us through your process a little bit more, or just in general, when working with other forms? Sure. Um, I, I mean, for me, a typeface kind of comes from, can come like have a few different factors in it. Like, I sometimes it starts with history um, or technology. I mean, this one was all about technology because I tried it out in a new font format where I could put all of all of these letters, all of these dip, all of these A's, I'm experimenting with a format called variable fonts, where you can put them all into one font. So it, it, to the extent that fonts are software, which they are, um, you know, technology is a big part of my product. Is this, is this the kind of process you're looking for? You're looking for like, first I started with the H, and then I drew no, like, you're, oh. no, technology, great. People start with other places, that's great. <laughs> Cool. Um, and tell me what uh, should I shut up now and let someone else talk? Um, yeah, let's get Aaron a turn. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was... <laughs> Don't shut up. Well, my... Okay, I prepared something a little longer, so I apologize if this is going to be boring. But I wanted to let's see. How do I... Uh, lordy, lordy. We practiced this before, but now I don't remember. Wonderful screen. Goodness gracious, who's better at this than me? They're all different. We all hang out Skype, they're all different. <laughs> and they're all hidden. Everything's hidden. Oh my gosh. Where on earth is this sheer screen? Am I insane? Oh. For me, it's under conversations. Oh my goodness. Oh, thank you. Teamwork. Yes. Oh my gosh. If this takes too long, you could skip to Roxanne because I'm a moron. Oh my gosh. Oh, my share screen. <laughs> oh, got it. Okay. Yippee! Yay! Yay. That's not it. <laughs> That's it. Okay. 
Applause for Aaron. Oh. Woo. Okay, oh, yeah. cool. So, woo, is, can you still see it? Yeah. Yes. It looks okay, great. great. So, um, <laughs> I, I wanted to start like 10 years ago, I would say. I graduated from design school and I thought, like, what do I actually care about? What, what, what do I want to help with? And I thought I wanted to work with literacy and education. I thought, oh, I'm going to travel to India and teach people English. Now I realize what I care about is helping people use their native language and keep it alive and use that to read. Um, so I took an Indian class and my teacher was talking about how he had a lot of trouble typing the worksheets with using his fonts. Um, this is the alphabet for Hindi. Now when he wanted to type Hindi, this is what his font would do. And this is what the word is actually supposed to look like. And it kind of helped me realize that there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff happening with the font, especially in non-Latin scripts. There's a lot of extra work that needs to be done to render a script correctly. And uh, several years ago, if you spoke one of these meeting languages and you couldn't read you know, the news on the internet, you had to have the exact font web designer used in order to render this. This is before those fonts uh, were used or came with your operating system when you bought a computer. You, it was just jumbled much. And if you could find a font, they were all pretty crappily made. I'm sorry to any designers here who made these, but um, they were very functional and the number of styles were very limited. That would be like, like living in a world like this, where every single thing that you used looked exactly the same, if it worked at all. The other hard part about not that scripts is a lot of them are really complicated um, with a lot of extra marks and pieces and Indian scripts uh, are very round in nature so it makes it hard to render them on screen at small sizes. So these are problems that a lot of the world encounters. These are all to the world where people don't use the Latin alphabet. And in India itself there are over 10 major languages uh, major different, sorry, writing systems used. So there are a lot of different people who need um, fonts in their language, for their script. So in order to learn these scripts, I went through a process of collecting lettering samples, trying to learn what native artists, um, how they would render the letters without having limitations of having to build a font. So I learned about different um, approaches to draw each letter shape. I also tried to learn calligraphy and the calligraphic background behind each of these letter shapes, practiced it myself, and also just casual hand thinking. How would you write it using different writing tools? And then finally, another step that I had to take was looking at old typefaces, printed books, things that weren't digitized and turned into fonts, but the things that people would read, and I wanted to learn what was legible to someone in a certain language. So I collected all these resources from libraries and the internet. I actually never visited India. This is all stuff I managed to find in the United States on, online uh, before I well, finally went to India, but this was before my first typeface that I made. So the process for Indic type design is actually kind of similar to Latin type design. So like. David's letters probably look similar to this when he's drawing them um, in a font editor. Except there's a lot of different variations, a lot of different letters that you have to draw for an Indic script, um, and the difficulty of trying to make it stylistically match with a Latin font. I don't know if you can see the hand up here, but up at the top. Uh, the projects, oh, sorry, there's my dog. Um, projects, uh, oh, geez. Thanks, Scrappy. Uh, the projects that you see in the exhibition, um, they were also meant to match a Latin font stylistically. So another problem is it's kerning, where you try to work with letter fit, maybe letter combination both good together. So I had to kind of um, figure out what different common shapes there were in a script and then work out every single different combination of all of these bits and pieces to make them fit properly. I also had to write code so that, you know, when my Hindi teacher, if he wants to write a combination of consonants one after another, they will magically form together and create the word um, to be read properly. And then it, the process includes a lot of testing with looking at 
letter spacing, and also whether or not those features that I wrote uh, rendered the word in the correct manner. I also do a lot of testing where I am using my fonts in context to think how they might actually work um, with a person actually using them, the intended use. So this is a sample of what a used website might look like with one of my fonts. So that's kind of like a really condensed view of what the process is. Uh, and these are two of the fonts that are in, in the uh, typeface designs, sorry, in the exhibition that these were created for Google. They're available for free for anyone to use, so that's really amazing. And I'm glad that they have multiple ways so that people can use it in a lot of different, um, uh, a lot of different contexts. And uh, one of the other projects in the exhibition is Hibali, which is a very round uh, Canada font for use in South India. So yeah, like I said, these are available for free, which is cool. Um, people can use them on websites and on, download them and use them on their computer. So I like to think that my work is kind of helping fulfill that goal that I stuck it out for, helping people to use their native language um, instead of having to English. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Erin. Um, and so now we'll move on to Roxanne. Roxanne, if you want to pull up your wonderful font. Uh, uh, I don't really hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh. It might be a connection problem. Um, I just hear voice, but I can't manage to understand what you're saying. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, let me see if I can. Do you share my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, we can see your screen. Mm -hmm. Or. We're sharing screen. No. Okay. So uh, I'm in the exhibition, uh, it's my typeface baby that is presented. That's the only typeface I have released so far. So I will talk about the process behind that uh, typeface. Um, I started uh, baby when I was uh, in, uh, in school studying typeface design uh, in Estad Amiens in France. It was in 2013. And for me, this typeface is really the reflect of my learning uh, of the typeface design field because I was very new to the field before I entered uh, this master program. So uh, I did experiment it a lot uh, with the shapes. Uh, as you can see here, I was very uh, novice and uh, very uh, new, and I did learn a lot. And uh, I uh, combined ex from, um, exploration with letter forms and history in order to improve um, the text weight. So this is how the uh, regular um, started and I was always uh, exploring, learning something new, like here uh, the Empower of Portuguese that helped me to refine my project and I also sketched, sketched a lot. Um, and yeah, I had those uh, shapes that are a bit weird that finally came together. And I did uh, exactly the same process for the italics, um, drawing something very spontaneously that don't really work, and then studying other different kind of italics to see uh, if they could fit to the project. So this is roughly a slanted uh, regular, and then I changed it and adapted it to have something that fits could that fit more with the regular face. And uh, we had a workshop at school uh, with Vera Vesega about stencil types. And I used this uh, opportunity to uh, design another way for the uh, family typeface. For the family, I did uh, this version where I, where I increased uh, the um, feature for the regular. So as you can see here, uh, I kept the structure, but I uh, went a bit crazy about some shapes. <laughs> and I didn't want it to have a stencil, so I filled the hole, and then it was belly display. And this was for the typeface. Uh, this was belly uh, for my graduation. 
education at school. Um, and then after graduation, I was lucky enough to be uh, chosen as a recipient of the first um, incentive program uh, by Tech Together. Uh, Tech Together is an independent country and they do every year now um, this program that helps uh, recent graduates. Uh, they provide mentoring and financial support and they help um, release and publish uh, the typeface. So with uh, Rosé and Veronica, we did rework on some of the things, as you can see here. I hope my connection is good. Do you hear me? Are you working well? Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, and then I also did print a lot, a lot of proof. And also uh, at school I was very focusing on the design. But with Rosé and Veronica from Tech Together, I really learned how to develop a typeface uh, to uh, extend the character sets. Uh, yeah, have what has a good proportion for small caps and stuff like that. We also refine shape. This is very tiny details. And also how to improve uh, proportion because I was very uh, kind of naive when I was in school. I was not really, I was like following uh, extreme principle like both side figure on the side, but this in this particular case was not very. Uh, it was not really fitting, so we did uh, did some adjustments. And also, uh, what are the good proportion for superior and inferior? Was stuff that I didn't know when I was in school. So I don't know how it's uh, with uh, it together. And I also extend the sets of character sets to a full uh, professional uh, character set. And it was I, I had the choice between a standard and a pro. Character set meaning small caps and uh, extended range of superior. And I went for the pro version, not for the sake of having uh, a thousand leaf font and to be proud of how many leaves there is, but for me it was uh, a learning. Um, oh, I don't know the word in English. Um, it was the occasion to, learn, uh, to keep learning. And I did the same for the other ways. Some shapes are changing. Extension of the character sets and also on the italic. Yeah, some very uh, welcome things. Mm -hmm. And also, I did add from scratch the word italic. Uh, extended it. And this is how the text face, uh, the text uh, weights are uh, looking now. And the huge part was the display because I started it uh, during a workshop and I had first, uh, I had ideas but I had a lot of solutions to find to make it work. So I did once again sketch a lot. Uh, during my, uh, I, I always work like that. I'm not doing the, uh, um, my sketch are very rough but they have helped me to put on paper what I have in mind and then I do the, I try to do the uh, pretty drawings on the screen instead of paper, and also because I'm not a good uh, sketcher. Maybe. Sketcher, is that the word? Yeah. Um, yeah. It makes sense. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of uh, proof. And so, I have to fix a consistency problem, and like for this G, we have a very straight axis. Uh, it wasn't really fitting with the other ones. So back at scale, I'm switching again, refining, and I think I drew maybe 50 of, 50 of those uh, jeans before to find one that works. I was happy with this one in the end. So yeah, this is another uh, picture of uh, my uh, sketchbook. So as you can see, it's a very fine drawing. And yes, yeah, so it was the last adjustment. It's not. Uh, very um, visual, but there is a lot of changing. <laughs> and the funny thing is to compare uh, what I did for during the workshop and the final version, which took me two years to do. And basically, all the ideas were well, there during the workshop. I don't know why we so much time to finish because it's a different whole year. 
same year but it was released uh, in 2016 by uh, Jack Gaza, January and this is how the family looks like now and um, yeah thank you Roxanne thank you Roxanne um, something you said actually you just said actually uh, really stuck out to me is that it took you two years to do this um, and if I can have you exit out of screen share so we can see everyone again. Are you guys all still here? Um, but yeah, so obviously uh, type-based design takes a really long time, um, a lot of small changes going on throughout. So what keeps you guys working with letter forms when it's such a long process? It's fun. <laughs> uh, Roxanne, can you exit out of your screen share? Oh, yes. For me, I keep doing typefaces because um, it's, gosh, well, yeah, I, I like the challenge, I like learning new things, but also I don't want to go back and work doing graphic design in like a, you're just like selling plastic crap to people. I don't want to do that. So, and I don't have any other skills, so I have to keep doing this. Yeah, like, like Aaron said, uh, I don't have other skills too, so that's why I don't do it. <laughs> and so I'm not bored yet by the design. Uh, every new project, you learn new things. I am amazed how, uh, oh sorry, I'm not very fluent. Uh, I'm amazed by how many things you can happen, you can learn, sorry, with a new project. Like, if it's a style you didn't explore yet, there is a whole new knowledge that you can absorb. And I feel like you always, you always learn with type of design. I think it's the same for other fields, but yeah, I'm still like, yeah, like keeping on. And I'm not bored yet. I'm still doing for a while. <laughs> David, how about you? Yeah, I mean, actually, when when Roxanne said two years, that, that that's about my average as well. Um, in terms of like thinking about a typeface actually releasing it. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why I started the Fall in the Month Club is to kind of just like free myself from that, you know, constraint to make things, or like that I want to make things perfect and make things right and just be okay getting my work out into other people's hands at an earlier stage in the process. Um, actually, can you talk like, about Fall of the Month Club for like a quick sec, uh, do like a 10 second pitch? Sure. Uh, people sign up and I send them one month every month at the beginning of the month. So I just set up a new one two days ago. Um, it all happens pretty fast. Um, I mean, I, I, don't, I mean, some fonts are you know, things I've had sitting around for years that I just wanted an excuse to work on them. And other fonts I actually start that month and try to actually get something useful at the end of the month. And where can um, people sign yeah. up for the font of the month club? So I say it again? Where can people sign up? Oh, uh, farmlet.club. I'm not trying to pitch here, sorry. No, I, I mean, I'm making you pitch personally. This is all me doing this. So okay, thank, thank it's, you. Not, it's not on you. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, I think that we work really well in like with constraints. And I, and I think type design has a lot of very interesting constraints that you know you you don't want to be you don't want to end up making the same thing over and over again, right? So you're looking for like new ways in this very narrow area where you just usually have black and white. You have, you know, you have to make it readable, but at the same time, you're looking for ways to like find new ways to express text. I guess. So, what are you guys looking to do now with your work? You've um, showed us some of your work now. What are you guys working on? Um, what are your plans for now? Uh, Two years, or however long it takes. Anyone? Well, yeah, I. It's uh, the uh, the non-Latin font stuff is kind of tricky because it because yes, it takes two years, like everyone said, to make a product, um, and typically, 
for me, the consumers buy the fonts, um, Indian language fonts, like they can't pay the same prices in general as people in Europe and America. Like you really want to give a font to the masses. So most of what I do is commission based. So it takes like a giant company, Google or Adobe or Microsoft or something, they pay you and then you do the font. So it's really hard. So I have to wait for those big projects to come along. So now I have to figure out, what do I do in the meantime while well, I'm waiting for a big paycheck? So I, I think I'm going to start my own um, foundry and make some other either Latin designs or yeah, release, release things on my own to sell them to the public. So that's my plan. No, no. Roxanne, oh, go ahead. Um, yeah, well, um, I am mostly working for other people right now. Uh, it's what I've been doing since I left school. Um, I am assisting designers, uh, and I also, yeah, as I said, part-time, I'm doing part-time work for Tech uh, Together. But yeah, and then I also, since I released Billy, I took a break from uh, designing new typefaces because it was a huge piece and it was also my first. Uh, but yeah, since my year I started new stuff and so now the plan is to actually find enough time during the week to <laughs> dedicate myself to uh, pushing those typefaces. It's quite a long, um, yeah, long process. So yeah, I wish, uh, I hope that I can release new stuff <laughs> soon. But it's always hard to find a balance between commission work and actual, actual paid work because you need to live and pay rents and doing uh, personal projects. And I care to have my weekends, so it's, uh, it's a bit slow all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think balancing commissions with with retail work is, is a, 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 like an interesting challenge because I think beyond just the paycheck commission work also gives you the chance to really like connect with the user and to learn what 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 someone would find useful in this typeface. So like a lot of, of my background is I, I started I right out of college working at a foundry called Bomb Bureau and they did a lot of newspapers, magazines, that sort of um, work and so a lot of my background was working with that and I learned a lot just by, you know, I mean doing doing projects that were totally nothing like fit which I showed you, right? Fit was all me, all just like, you know, and it's like, yeah, like the most useless front you'll probably ever find. Um, but at, but you know at the same time I think it's good to balance like kind of going out there and being creative with uh, actually working on real stuff. So I would love to do commissions. I'm working on a lot for interfaces. I'm working on a um, revival of an Italian slab serif from the 60s to match a sans serif that I revived um, by the famous uh, type designer Aldo de Moresa. Um Yeah, those are a couple of my projects. That's awesome. Thank you so much, um, all of you, for joining us. Um, I wish I could talk to you for another like, three hours, but uh, people have to go to class. So I'm going to hand this over to our founder, Thomas Joplin. So can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right, cool. So first I want to thank our panelists for their contributions to the exhibition and this discussion. So thank David, Aaron, and Roxanne. Thank you so much for your help. Can everybody give a round of applause for their contributions? I want to thank the Type Thursday team for designing the exhibition. You know, these are type designers, so there was a whole team that made the band, the banners and graphics you saw in the gallery space here at the university. So awesome, you see your audience, thank you for your great work. Everyone give a round of applause for that great work. As well as Whitney, she also got along with the band as well. So great job on that. So I guess the takeaway I hope everyone took from this discussion and the exhibition, and the whole reason why the name of the exhibition is called What You See Is Not What You Get, is this thing we take for granted, letter forms, type, box, this thing we use all the time, is, is actually a very intentful way of thinking and process that, and more importantly, a window for a way to connect with the world itself, culturally, with people, 
and with ourselves in our, in our, in our direction and vision. So I personally inspired by the work discussed and by the community and people who care about this topic. I hope you all learned something new today that you may not have known before. May then inspire you to make your own letter forms in whatever capacity that is, because there's many ways to do so. Fonts is one direction, but much as lettering, graphic design, branding, it's a tool for a way to express yourself and understand the world. So I want to thank you all for your time. Don't forget, Type Thursday is hosting a type grid here in your own university at 4 o'clock, I believe. Yes. yes. Uh, contact, come see us after this discussion to learn more about it. Also, we are hosting in New York City once a month, as Whitney brought up. She is a chapter in New York City. We're also around the world and the United States. We're in London. That's opening this, this Thursday as well. Uh, LA, Seattle, San Francisco, Chicago, and Philly all happening this month. So don't forget to tell your friends or anyone interested in joining Tech Thursday in those cities. We know anyone. Hope you all can attend either the text of the discussion today, later on, or on Thursday. And lastly, I hope, to, again, I want to thank you all for your time and patience. Thank you so much for your discussion, and I look forward to seeing you in another engagement on, on down the road. Thank you all. Cool. All right, thank you guys. Okay, hang on. Thank you. Later. Bye. Thank you. Bye.